Coming up in 19 minutes to the top of the hour, when someone suffers a brain injury, not all of the effects are necessarily obvious, even to some of the best trained doctors. That's where this next amazing machine comes in. The KinArm uses virtual reality and robotic arms to give doctors a look at brain function like they've never seen before. And joining us this morning from Kingston, Ontario, is the developer, Dr. Stephen Scott. He presented his machine at a neurological conference in San Diego earlier this week. Stephen, great to see you this morning. We should point out for folks at home that each year in the United States, 1.7 million people suffer some sort of traumatic brain injury. They, they hit their heads, or as we've seen with the military, explosives cause damage. How, how, how accurate and how effective are our current evaluation techniques in determining whether or not somebody's got a serious brain injury? Uh, it's, it's a real problem. Uh, I've certainly talked to some doctors in emergency rooms and they talk about having uh, football players come in, have a head injury, and they're not sure what they need to do. And there's very few tools that are available to really give a good handle of the function. So there's a real challenge there. Now, you've come up with a machine that uses computer programs and virtual reality to try to tell if somebody has, had, has, has got a lack of brain function because of an injury. Let's roll some video, first of all, of current techniques. A neurologist will sit in front of a patient, hold their finger out, ask the patient to put the finger on the doctor's finger, then touch their nose. Now let's take a look at your technology, which sits people inside this machine. Uh, they've got their right arm held in place and then they're asked to match the position with the left hand while being unable to see each other hand each uh, the other hand and they get it pretty accurately there as you can see on the screen now let's take a look at a stroke patient and what happens with them the right hand in place the left arm is moving all over uh, and you get a, a real sense that something's not right here why is this test better than the current tests well, if you look at the traditional test where they're touching their nose and touching the clinician's finger, uh, what they have is it is a subjective decision by the clinician that they have to do. And because it's subjective and they require the, the numbers to be the same, they end up having very coarse scales. And all they can score is, say, 0, 1, or 2 for how well they did. 0, they couldn't do it at all. 1, they had some problems. And 2, they did it, did it well. And the problem is, is two things. One, it's an extremely coarse scale. So what does one mean? It covers a very broad range. And you can have a subject improve a lot through rehab, but they still aren't able to make it up to the next step. As well, the problem is, is if you get a one, it's not clear why they couldn't do the task. Mm -hmm. Is it because they couldn't correct or right. there was weakness? And, and, so the idea with our technology... Oh, go well, ahead. I was going to say we can clearly see here on this side-by-side -side comparison that the person who is normal gets their hand, their left hand, within a, a very defined range, but the person who's had the stroke, it's kind of all over the place. What, what are conditions that this vice, uh, device might be applicable to diagnosing? Well, uh, it's actually for all possible brain injuries. We started with stroke just as a model system where it's very complex, the types of individual problems they have. Mm -hmm. And in this task, you can see that this, this stroke subject had severe problems being able to take the information from their limb, sensory information, to say where their arm is in space. And so this is an actual uh, problem that there's very few good tools to measure this proprioceptive function. Right. Um, and so it can be applicable to any possible disease or injury that affects the brain. And there is an enormous number, not just stroke. Traumatic brain injury is a very hot topic right now mm -hmm. with the... Uh, uh, military situations in Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as concussions in sports. And it's very important to get fast, rapid information, and it's important that it's objective. It doesn't matter where you have the test done. That's the nice thing with the robotic technology, is it doesn't matter if you're in L.A. or New York, you're going to get the same number. And as well, instead of these coarse scales, as I talked about for the traditional measures, you get this fine grain ability to take a measure, parameterize or, or take all the information we get and identify the, uh, a range of values that are possible in a very fine detail so you get much better precision. Yeah, and, you know, it's, 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 repetitive. It's, it's, it's repeatable, which is really terrific. I know that this is moving from the laboratory now into some test hospitals, so we'll be watching closely, and I know our Dr. Sanjay Gupta will have a particular interest in this as he's a neurologist. Stephen Scott at Queen's University, great to talk to you this morning. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you very much. All right. Um,